you know, I do a carnival doc because I know it's, I believe it, I believe the N15 data, I'm convinced that the isotope data is correct. Um, I've looked into it thoroughly, the archaeological evidence. The archaeological evidence is quite clear. The moment humans moved to plant-based agriculture, a lot of health issues started emerging, arthritis, um, iron deficiency, anemia, and all sorts of things. We've got it in the skeletal bones. You can actually see on the skull, you know, these like little white patches. We know that's iron deficiency in agriculturalists. We see rickets. We see all sorts of um, abnormalities in this muscle, in the skeletal structure. And we know that's quite clearly from nutrient deficiencies coming from the plant foods and the anti-nutrients. So modern day people that have had 10,000 years of, you know, some acquiring certain genetic um, adaptations can tolerate these things more. It doesn't mean it's optimal, but you can tolerate it. And if you use anti-nutrient anti um, mitigating techniques like people used in the past that Western A. Price identified, you know, soaking and fermenting and all this sort of stuff, you can reduce things further using lactoferrin from, you know, raw dairy to bind a lot of these anti-nutrients and eliminate them, can also mitigate and allow you probably to consume that, you know, 25% or a third without being as deleterious as it would be having it, you know, in without doing those steps. So that's an important thing. And you notice that populations, archaeologists have noticed populations that have traditions of fermentation, other things, tend to have less of these skeletal issues compared to populations that haven't implemented some of these techniques. So that's also in the literature. It's all there to be found if people look.